Hey everybody, and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program RP0. It's been a very long wait and uh, a highly anticipated day. This today, the Jupiter 2 passed into Jupiter's sphere of influence. Exciting! I uh, am super excited. We're about two months away from actually being at our closest encounter. We have no radio connection. Uh, let me just double check. Yes. All of our uh, commands are still loaded into Flight Computer. This is awesome. So, uh, there it is, way off in the distance. And we're actually not getting any telemetry data back at uh, KSP for any of this, because as I said before, it is completely out of range for these piddly little antennas for it. But I'm super intrigued to know if uh, this flyby is going to work, if it's going to actually be able to collect data, and how long it will be before it actually comes in range again. I think our other two satellite probes, the uh, Jupiter Orbital Mission and the Jupiter Flyby Mission, will both be at Jupiter and transmitting before this one gets in range of Earth again to uh, relay back whatever data it collects. But we've got about 62 days to burn, and thanks to the magic of time warp, Oh, that's cool, watching the orbits. That is really pretty. I'm just fascinated here. And I, I wish I had more interesting things to talk about, but I I think I, I kind of already threw it all out there. It's awesome. Jupiter has biomes. Oh, advanced construction has completed. That means we can make adjustments to the RA-9. Ooh, maybe, maybe. Oh, we jumped out of time warp. Here we go. So yeah, still 43 days to go. We've got uh, a couple things cooking at the uh, VAB assembly lines, but nothing that we need to worry about launching for uh, at least another 60 days after this encounter. Alright, flight computer, I'm gonna tuck you away for the time being. Oh man. <laughs> this is... It's kind of neat watching this happen in super fast forward. That is amazing. Way to go, Distant Object Enhancement. You've made so many cool things happen here. Uh, we're about two days from our closest approach. Or no, not even from our closest approach. Yeah, that's our maneuver node that we're two days from. We are still 16 days from our closest approach, which means the view is only going to get better for about the next two weeks. And hopefully, at right around the same time, Flight Computer will drop us out of time warp. Uh, okay, yeah, there's our maneuver node. Delete on close. Close alarm. So this is where I set the node to start the countdown so that I could more accurately, uh, well, so that I could make sure I could be here and paying attention to things when Flight Computer decided it was time to do its thing. I don't need those controls, so we'll just tuck that off the screen for a bit. And, uh, huh. <laughs> I think I would like to remind everyone that it is 1962, and our space program is accomplishing this. This is absolutely incredible. I have not taken the time to fix the cloud rendering on Jupiter, so it still might look a little funky, but still this is rather majestic, if I do say so myself. Oh yes, and of course, the minute I go into like, let's take a beauty camera shot, all the weirdness happens. Wow. And this is the closest uh, any man-made object at this point has ever been to Jupiter. Although I, yeah, I really need to fix the cloud rendering. And yeah, here's our warp around, dropping us out of time warp. Out of power, oh no. Oh, well that is severely disappointing. Cannot run deploy on schedule. It's not going to be able to do much of anything on schedule because these are pretty much useless. Please tell me I shut down the telemetry on this thing. Well, it doesn't matter. I can't do much of anything without uh, a connection. 
Oh, this was my greatest fear, and I guess that's why I set up the maneuver node, so I wouldn't spend 60 days admiring the view. <sighs> wow, we're just burning off electric charge. Oh, that's really sad. I'm deeply saddened by this, and I would be a little more annoyed if we didn't have two other flights already cooking. Yeah, there's... There's literally just nothing we can do. I, I forgot about that one little aspect that I should probably not pay attention to it until four days out because then, and only then, would I be able to have enough power to do stuff. Well, maybe in another decade or two, it'll make another flyby. It's still got some fuel and things. We can make some adjustments. But we've got these two. Jup the Jupiter 3 JOSM and the DOS P1 that are going to both have radio contact and power when they get there, thanks to RTGs and other stuff. Well, I guess we can just calmly say goodbye to Jupiter. Let me just double check. Yep, we've got 73 days before launch window to Saturn. Oh, that's a much better beauty shot, isn't it? Except for all the weird cloud knee effect things. Goodbye, majestic Jupiter. We'll see you again in just a little while. Hello, Callisto. Awesome. Well, let's jump back to the Space Center and see if we can't make some improvements to the RA-9. All right. And so here we are at the VAB. I'm going to open up our latest RA9 variant as soon as the open menu decides to actually load. Although the craft file in this is growing considerably with all of these variants and missions getting their own craft file. And there's the Omega series, the RA8 and the 9HF series, uh, RA9. And. No, our latest variant is our Saturn 9 flyby. Load. Yeah, and a couple other things I never bothered to fly. These two, namely. Alright. There's the old girl. Yeah, and this for some reason always happens whenever I load this. There, that fixed it. So really, I think this means that we can actually have uh, larger tank sizes now, but what I'm really interested in... Oh, come on. That was just uncalled for. Why did you do that? I don't even remember how I had it painted now. Which one was it? Uh. <laughs> and, oh, gross. Alright, well, we're just going to stick with the Soyuz. Maybe that'll be our defining feature. What I really want to know is, do we actually... Yes! We have cryogenic tanks. That is awesome. Oh, I should have just left this alone, because I'm going to have to switch... Huh, this tank down here also to cryogenic. There we go. That's a pretty small improvement. I guess I should also... Which one is this? Uh, the RL-10A3-3? Let's see... Yeah, nope. We got the... The A1-433. It's 4.22, 7 minutes 10. That's 7 minutes 50 at 4.33. I think ours is running, yeah, 4.44. So currently, we have the best available setup of the RL, RL-10. But, uh, cryogenic tanks. That is a great improvement to this rocket. And we can add cryogenic tanks to other things also. What is this? The Surveyor Corps. Alright, go away. Alright, ah, control vessels up to one ton. 
Is that, where's the other core I was using? Yeah, here it is. Yeah, 0 0.6 tons, so that is now our premium uh, controllable core. And it shuts down, and it's got an internal tank. I would like to purchase that for entry cost. That means we can probably uh, update some of our spacecraft also, like whatever the junk is we we're going to send to Mars, and the other junk that we're probably going to send to Venus. I could take the time to update this uh, Saturn flyby mission, but I will not. So this is now the RA-9B. Save. Uh, yeah, I hate to use a special distinction just because now it has cryogenic tanks, but uh, I need some kind of means to distinguish them within the VAB. Crazy, right? Being able to find your stuff later. Alright, uh, anyway, I think I'm just going to call this one an episode. I know it's kind of lame. I know yesterday's was kind of lame, but tomorrow we're going to be launching one of these. Well, I mean, not one of these. It's going to be an RA-9A, but hopefully we'll be uh, pitching stuff at Saturn. Uh, I have no idea if it's actually going to make it. I never bothered to check the stats on how much Delta V is required to get to Saturn, but considering the success of our uh, Jupiter probes, I mean, in that they made it there, not that the first one did what it was supposed to, but it made it there, and that's what counts. Partial victory. Anyway, so, tomorrow, launching for Saturn. Um, until then, thanks for hanging out, everybody. I will see you later.